Joining us now for the Political Roundtable, Senator Malcolm Augustine, Democrat of Prince George's County and Republican Delegate Matt Morgan of Southern Maryland. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. I should point out you are both unopposed. So instead of knocking on a thousand doors this weekend, you'll be watching football games, right? Uh, well, well I won't be, Jeff. I, this weekend, we still will be out there working hard for our colleagues and uh, for the candidates who are running for office. So we'll still be working through the weekend. Delegate Morgan, same thing? Same thing. We'll still be, out, still be out sign waving, putting up signs, working the uh, voting precincts, and really well, well, tell me, for the general election. Dad, tell me the final messaging. We're into the final weekend. It, you know, everything's been refined. If you're talking to an undecided voter, start with Delegate Morgan. Why? why uh, what's your argument for them getting out voting and voting for your party? Well, I, I think Ronald Reagan said it best. Um, is your life any better than it was four years ago? And in this case, is was your life any better than it was pre-pandemic? And I think the overwhelming answer is yes to that question. Uh, democratic policies have been failures. We're at uh, a 40-year high in inflation. Uh, crime is skyrocketing. And look, you can lay that squarely on the foot uh, of democratic failed policy. I know Senator Augustine knows this because you know, Prince George's County Executive just extended a curfew for Prince George's County for minors because carjackings and other crime was so bad. You look at legislation put out from Annapolis that contributed to this, justice reinvestment, uh, no cash bail bond, juvenile justice reform, police reform, have all contributed and made our society significantly less safe and created a revolving door at the police station. You look at education. It is failing. It's Education is so bad. And, and look, I know a lot of people want to push that off to the, blame it on the pandemic, but we had problems in our education system before the, the pandemic because of behavioral problems and how we've redone those, um, those policies in the classroom. Recently, the State Board of Education has just came out and the education is so poor, reading and writing scores, they refuse to release them before the election date. A national report card just came out and had Maryland at close to the bottom. And then you look at other cultural issues that are a problem. I know my friends on the left don't like to to acknowledge them and tell us, you know, us on the right are making them up. But uh, I know the senator knows this bill. There was a bill that was passed through the Senate this year, it was SB 682, that dealt with taxpayer funded gender reassignment surgeries. All right, let me let me get to Senator Augustine's response to that. And I, and you're well, closing. Well, I just think people feel that you know, this isn't a Democrat or Republican election. This is insanity versus sanity at this point. Senator Augustine. Thank you so much, Jeff. I really do appreciate that. And it is insanity versus sanity. And uh, clearly, folks have made very clear that the insanity is in the form of Dan Cox. That much everybody is pretty uh, sure about, including uh, Governor Hogan. So let's just start with that. Uh, but with regard to what we're doing on the Democratic side, I'm going to go with what our leader has said, leave no one behind. It's not to suggest that we don't have issues or concerns that we need to work through coming out of the pandemic. That much is very clear. But he's also made clear that we're going to work towards economic, economic opportunity for all. We're going to work on that world-class public education, and we're going to work to have effective and affordable health care, among other issues. And we're going to do that and move forward. We're not going to be looking backwards and looking to grievances and everything else. We're going to work to bring everybody forward. Delegate well, Morgan, has has Delegate Cox, the Republican nominee for governor, done anything? He, he won the Republican primary over the, uh, the Hogan endorsed uh, candidate, um, a more mainstream, moderate Republican with the in endorsement of uh, Donald Trump. Has has Mr. Cox done anything since then to, to try to broaden his appeal? I think he has. And the one thing he has done is got up and actually talked about sound policy. Now, now my colleague in the Senate here just talked about some of uh, the top line talking points from, from candidate Westmore. Um, they sound really good. I mean, but really it's kind of, 
it's lacking substance. It's like feel good rhetoric without substance. You sit there and say, well, we're going to lower health care costs when last year they passed a tax increase taxing people's health care and premiums. So I, I'm really concerned about like as we're going forward in the state of Maryland and we start talking about some of these issues, we have a lot of rhetoric out there, but not a lot of substantive policy behind it. I think Dan Cox has done a pretty good job coming out here and painting the differences between uh, the Democratic policy and the Republican policies that's really centered on freedom and the Bill of Rights and, and enabling individuals to achieve their dreams versus having the government be uh, the end all be all for everyone. Um, Senator, I'll let you in on that, but also a question for both of you. The, the polls, the, the two most recent independent polls have shown uh, Mr. Moore ahead by uh, about 30 points. Is that the, the final margin you're expecting to see? Well, I know that that's what I'm expecting to see, because I think that the people of the state of Maryland know that Wes Moore is the leader that we need, that the policies that he's talking about are what we need for the state. And there are specifics as regard to things like the economy, which, of course, we know it's important. We got to deal with inflation. There are supply chain issues, though. And what we want to do is we want to bring jobs back to Maryland. So we're going to concentrate on workforce and apprenticeships in a post-pandemic world that will allow for us to meet those challenges. And we're also going to deal with those things like the mental health crisis that's going on out there with direct policies that help us to address people's mental and substance use and abuse issues so we can address those significant concerns, including crime, as at the root cause to do something about that. So these are the things that I think that we're going to concentrate on, including making sure that folks have that world-class education, providing tutoring and wraparound services uh, that Marylanders really want to see us to help and to work together to get to. Uh, Mr. Morgan, Delegate Cox is uh, is asking supporters to monitor these uh, absentee ballot collection boxes. Is there a real fear uh, about the, the safety of the ballots or, or is that something that is uh, meant to energize the, the base? I, I don't think there's a real fear. I, I think there's just common sense. And he's asking for people to monitor this. Let's, let's face the fact that there's no voter ID law in Maryland. There's no way that you can authenticate a single absentee ballot, mail-in ballot into the state of Maryland. You know, when you sign the outside of the envelope there, people think that that signature is verified. There's no verification at all in Maryland on mail-in ballots. And, you know, I was at a voting precinct during early voting uh, a few days ago. And it's interesting, you know, those, those drop boxes were installed pre or post-pandemic to try to alleviate the strain on the post office. The pandemic is over, but those, those mail-in boxes, those drop boxes are still there. And where I'm located at, you, you don't even have to get out of your car. You just drive up and, and put the ballots in the box. So we hope everyone is obeying the law. I think everyone's obeying the law. I haven't seen any evidence of anyone not obeying the law, but still the, the policies, you know, are not really um, set to reassure the public on, on election integrity. Are, are, are those things not monitored officially? I mean, there's no camera. Is there somebody there 24 hours? Jeff, there are. There are people at those uh, uh, boxes 24 hours, seven days a week monitoring. They are there. They are making sure that they are protected and safe. This is what we've done. The truth of the matter is there has been no election fraud in the state of Maryland that anyone can point to. This is a, just a red herring. And again, we have at the top of the Republican ticket an election denier, for goodness sake. I mean, <laughs> this is just unbelievable that this is the person who we're going against. Again, Marylanders understand that. That's why, as you hey, mentioned Jeff. earlier, we're going to see 30 points uh, or more victory for, uh, for our soon-to-be governor, Wes Moore. Hey, Jeff. Jeff. Morgan. It's, yeah. it's always uh, ironic that you know, the people, uh, my friends on the left, never acknowledge the fact that in 2020 primary in Maryland, the State Board of Election kicked out nearly 35,000 ballots because they were duplicates. So they never acknowledge that fact at all. And then call Dan Cox an election denier, I think is a hyper criticism when Wes Moore last week did a fundraiser with Hillary Clinton. Now, she is the original election denier. She spent the last six years denying the outcome of the 2016 election. 
And I'm telling you, if you asked her right now, I'm not really sure she would give you an accurate answer on, on who won the 2000 election. So, I, I, Matt, I just don't think that the public agrees with you on that. I mean, it's that, pretty, that clear, Hillary Clinton pretty clear that, that mm -hmm. yeah, right. I mean, no, no, Hillary Clinton never suggested that or went to uh, Pennsylvania to try to overturn uh, the election, which Dan Cox did. I mean, well, she went on, on The View last difference. week and uh, talked about how 2024 right wing conspiracies are coming out. So not only did she deny the 2016 election, she's falsely predicting there's going to be problems in the 2024 election. So Hillary look, Clinton is not on the ballot. Hillary Clinton's not on the ballot. Dan Cox is on the ballot. Dan Cox is an election denier. He's dangerous. That's what Governor Hogan has said. Okay. That's what Marylanders understand. I think the one thing that we should be able to agree upon, Jeff, that election denying is a bipartisan problem. Our thanks to Delegate Morgan and Senator Augustine.